Greater Tuna has, in a way, kind of actually made me be proud to be from Texas because all of these characters are so dysfunctional and so weird, but at the same time, it's a very tight-knit community. No head pedido esto, which is, I didn't order this. In which two characters who are disc jockeys um, named Arliss and Thurston are recurring characters that report the news, the mundane, monacity of day-to-day -day living in Greater Tuna. And to understand why this news, as, as innocuous as it may seem, is important to them, is to really appreciate the distinction between small town and not so small town. It's very exciting just to like come up with different characters and walk a different way and talk a different way. That's exciting. I think it's more of this propaganda by the liberal press and those hippie-oriented groups. So I think it's time somebody spoke up it's almost a dream job for a director because you really get to work really intensively with, with the actors. It has topics of gun control, it has topics of censorship, and it has racial commentary. You just told him everything, didn't you? As using the form of satire, um, the play parodies uh, life in a small town through um, the uh, the, the outrageous actions of these characters that for them is everything but outrageous. So for me, it literally is getting to that, that opening night and seeing those costumes on stage with the beautiful lights hitting them and being like, that is the character and it's brought to life now. I have tried on one of my dresses and I've been practicing walking in heels and it is horrible and I feel sorry for women. It's a sexy red dress, so it's hilarious to see a sexy red dress on a man, especially one that I've worn, so I love that. <laughs> it's a really great moment for me too.